Welcome back to Tabletop Assault. I'm Ross, and today I'm going to continue my segments on looking at Chapter Approved 2018. This time I'm going to be focusing a little bit on Adepta Sororitas. Can't believe I opened it up at the exact, uh, exact page I needed in that one. That was amazing. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to be having a look at their sort of beta codex that came out. Interesting move by Games Workshop to do a beta codex and allow, you know, to stress play the sort of codex by handing it to the players. Obviously we are playing with the sort of, I want to say old models, the current models, but there's going to be plenty of changes I hope for them in the future as we do know they're getting basically I think a whole new model range and the players seem to be in general very excited to see them come to the field. So how this is going to work is, is just a general view on the codex, so I'm going to have a look at its sort of uh, order abilities, uh, have a look at the sort of order rules, some of the units that stand out, warlord traits, stratagems and relics are kind of nice to use in the Adeptus Sororitas. So with that, let's begin by talking about their army sort of ability. So their ability is Acts of Faith. Uh, as Faith are Adeptus sort of special abilities, similar in a way how orders work for uh, Adeptus mechanic, uh, for Ashramel Tarum, uh, Death to the False Emperor, or they should know no fear for Space Marines. It's that sort of rule you're looking at. However, they're very different and frankly, pretty awesome. How they work is that you begin with three as standard and then you get one extra uh, for every 10 models you have in your army. Uh, that have the Acts of Faith ability, which a lot of this army, a lot of them do have that ability. However, notably one which does not have it is the Pentient Machine, but I'll go into that a bit later because it's pretty darn cool. You can activate a Faith once per battle round. Uh, you can choose the unit to do an Act of Faith and then roll to see if it works. Basically you need to match or better the roll of the Devotion uh, value uh, for the Act itself, with a 1, uh, an unmodified value of 1 always being a fail. So, a few that stand out, Spirit of the Martyr, Martyr Devotion Value 3, use this act of faith at the start of your movement phase. If successful, one model in the selected unit regains D3 lost wounds, or if there are no model, uh, wounded models in any models in the unit that have been slain, you can return one model uh, with one wound remaining. This model must be set up in unit coherency and cannot be set up within one inch of an enemy unit, and uh, if not possible to place that model, the act simply does not return. So Celestine is a, a pain to bring down, I'll explain that a bit later, but if you know her abilities you'll probably know why, and uh, this can make her an even more of a pain to bring down because she sure as heck can benefit from Acts of Faith. Uh, so yeah, I can see this one getting used quite a wee bit. Its devotion value is 3. Uh, Aegis of the Emperor, Devotion 3. Use this Act of Faith at the start of your opponent's psychic phase. If successful, then, until the end of the phase, roll a d6 each time the selected unit suffers a mortal wound. On a 4+, plus, that mortal wound is ignored. I imagine this is going to frustrate Magnus to no end, because you know what? He loves to smite, and being able to hamper is really useful. Situational, but I can see that against Psycho Heavy ar Armies, it might be called upon. Divine Guidance, Devotion Value of 4. Use this act of faith at the start of your shooting phase. If successful, add 1 to hit rolls for attacks made to this this unit's ranged weapons until the end of the phase. Adding one to it is always good, it's just a shame it was not in the fight phase as well, where I think this devotion could be seen being used once in the shooting phase or in the fight phase because you only do it once per battle round. Where I can see this getting used is I can see it with Dominion squads of Storm Bolters and Retribution squads with possibly Heavy Bolters. Generally, uh, I like them, I like how it works. Uh, I think, uh, you know, there's one, two, three, four, five, five abilities, add in a sixth, make it even, you know, just because I like even numbers, and they'll be really good. But generally, I do like the Acts of Faith. They've also got a Shield of Faith, uh, models in the unit have six up in bow. In addition with this ability, uh, in addition units with this ability can deny one psychic power in each enemy psychic phase in the same manner as a psyker. When you do so, First select a model in the unit, measure range, visibility, etc. from this model. When making this attempt, roll a single d6 instead of 2d6. The psychic power is resisted if the roll is greater than the result of psychic test that's been manifest to the power. Now, most psychic abilities go off in a 5. You've got to beat that, and they've got to roll a 5. So most fail on 5, you know, on 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, very few fail on 5. 
Uh, well, a few fail on five, but when they're cast on, very few are cast on a four. So I don't see that going to be used too much. I think that needs to be redone. Uh, it's nice to have that anti-psyker part, but I just don't feel it is good, quite good enough. There is ways to augment it, but I just don't feel it's quite there, because really you're looking for sixes on 1d6 to stop it. And you have loads of like people that's the faith to maybe stop psychers, but to only do so when your opponent casts a five and then you've got to get a six is very situational. But a six up pinball, pretty nice. Zealot, now some units don't have Acts of Faith and stuff like that, they work differently. They have Zealot, which is you can reroll uh, failed hit rolls for this unit on the turn in which they made a charge move, was charged or performed a heroic intervention. That is awesome, that is really good. Uh, almost in my eyes better than Shield of, uh, Shield of Faith. Uh, you'll find that the Zealot units I also believe can't use Acts of Faith, but uh, the Zealot rule there is really, really handy, so I'm quite a big fan of that. Next up we've got the Order Convictions. Now the Order Convictions are similar to uh, you know, Legion rules if you will. Uh, you know, they get a couple of, you know, when you field them as in a sort of a, a, an Order of Conviction is what they call, then you obviously get an Order Rule. And there's a couple that stand out in this one. So the ones I'm going to sort of specify on is uh, our Martyr Lady. Each time a unit with this conviction from your army dis is destroyed, you gain a Faith Point. Oh, you killed that small five-man troop squad. I'll have a faith point, thanks. I'll use that on something else. Uh, Ebony Chalice, add one to results to test face with this conviction. I think this will probably see the most benefit. Adding one flat out on your uh, test of faith is really, really handy. I think that's the best, personally. Let me know, but it just means your acts of faiths, uh, when you are using them, are going to be a lot more reliable. Uh, those threes are going to be on twos and the sort of uh, fours on threes, etc, etc. Argent Shroud, each time an enemy unit is destroyed by a unit with this conviction, roll a d6. On a four plus, you gain a fa faith point. So destroy your opponent, on a four plus, you get a faith point. Nice, uh, reward you if you do hit hard, but I think uh, adding plus one to your results is gonna be the obvious better one. There's in total six there, that is sort of my three best ones. As I said, I'm just, you know, generally covering the codex, but those three, benefiting your faith points is going to be quite key. I think once people start using these rules more and use the updated faith system, they're going to tell us if faith points are really, really worth it. But I think overall, adding to the result is probably the best way forward. So key units, and there's quite a few to speak of uh, within the Deptas Sororitas uh, army. Let's start with Celestine. Still awesome. Uh, still an absolute beast, hits pretty hard, boosts in uh, of units around her uh, and on a 2+, plus, uh, when she's reduced to 0 wounds, can come back uh, and I believe she comes back with full wounds as well, yeah, all wounds regained. So you can use Acts of Faith, of Faith to keep her going Then when she's finally brought down you can on a 2+, plus bring her back, which I see for no reason you can't command point that if you do roll that dreaded 1, but really, really good. Uh, but basically she adds a uh, plus one to invul saves of everyone within six inches uh, or two to uh, Gemini Superior uh, if they are within six inches of Celestine. Really good. Uh, healing Tears can heal Gemini Superior, four up invul. Uh, got a D6 Assault Flamer at strength five. It's basically a heavy flamer but Assault D6. And her weapon is plus four strength to make her seven, minus three AP, two damage. She's proven herself pretty solid, and I think we're going to continue to see Celestine for a wee bit. I love the model, I think if that is the quality of the models we're going to see with Adeptus Sororitas, they are going to be a fantastic uh, army visually. Uh, next up we've got Canon S, which is kind of standard, you know, HQ, bit weak on toughness and strength 3, loads of wounds though, does have a nice DF armor save, 4 up invul, and reroll all hit wounds, uh, hit rolls of one for uh, order units in six inches. Pretty standard on that one, but we all love our reroll ones. Battle Sister Squad. Uh, now our only troop, troop choice, but not a bad one. Not as good in combat, but can be useful in small squads of special weapons if you want, because they can have a variety of different weapons. Same as small squads, and you can max out all the special weapons you want. I just feel a bit more variety in the troop choice is essential. So obviously, what I'd say, because this basic codex they are openly saying give us feedback is have a bit more option on troops because I feel that's just very important for the game to have 
your options when it comes to troop choices. At least just one more would be really, really nice. Repenta squads. Uh, so the Repenta squads is uh, an interesting one. Web skill, bliss skill 3, strength, toughness 3, 1 wounds, 2 attacks, and their weapons are these big massive things that are times 2 strength, so strength 6, minus 2 AP, 2 damage, minus 1 to hit when you hit, so 4 pluses. I can see this squad having potential, they can hit hard, but for their points they do have minus 1 to hit, and crucially, they have a 7 plus save, 7 plus save at toughness 3. So, yeah. Have a uh, Mistress Repentance nearby and you can reroll advanced charge and hit rolls, which is very, very good, so you want to have the Mistress of Repentance. Uh, but if they get caught out in the open, Bolters will annihilate them, just rapid fire in their face, they're done, they're dead, they're gone. And they're a wee bit expensive for that. They can ride in a Rhino, because they do have the order rule. But generally at that, I mean, even if they're in cover, uh, I believe they got, uh, you know, in cover, they're six up save, they're going to get their six up invul anyway. Makes it a bit difficult on that side as well. Uh, mm, difficult on that one. Hit hard, but they're less accurate and they can't take a hit themselves. That's difficult. So I know on that one, I think they need a wee bit of work on that one. Uh, Arco Flagellants. So Arco Flagellants, again, this sort of light but damage dealing unit. They move 7, uh, weapon skill 3 plus, strength 4, toughness 3, 2 wounds, 2 attacks, 7 plus save. Their uh, melee weapons are plus 1 strength, minus 1 AP and 2 damage, but each time they make an attack they get d3 attacks. They also have a 5 up, invo uh, five up ignore wounds, and uh, yeah, they don't have acts of faith or anything, but they do have zealot, which means uh, when they're essentially first round of combat sort of, they get to reroll hits. So yeah, again a combat unit uh, that had a bit less hard, but potential to do a lot more attacks, basically 2d3. Uh, Per model with stratum that can come three straight off the bat, which is 60 attacks in a full unit, which is actually really really good. Uh, has zealot, so again as a rerolls and five up ignore, really really good. However, no order rule means that they can't ride in transports. You know they've got toughness three, similar up save makes them very vulnerable, and they have to move up the field. Imagine if your opponent sees them come towards them, bolt of fire will just spray them down. Overall, I think they're not bad, I just think they need a way to survive a bit more. Don't know how you're going to implement that, but the 5-up uh, ignore wins is nice, and they have 2 wins apiece, so maybe they may actually be pretty good in that part. Crusaders, and I don't know much about these ones, uh, uh, movement 6, swim skill 3, bliss skill 4, uh, strength 3, toughness 3, 1 wound, 2 attacks, uh, but they are armed with power swords and storm shield, so storm shield does give them a bit of tankiness on them. They also have Axe of Faith, Shield of Faith, etc. So yeah, Crusaders, Web Skill 3, 2 attacks, Power Sword, Storm Shields, 3 up invul, all very nice and actually pretty, pretty cheap. Good Harasser unit, I actually really like them. Uh, interest to see where they do go forward. Uh, you know, I think you can have up to 10 in the unit. So yeah, I think that can be a potentially very, very good unit. Uh, now they do have... Uh, Zealot, so they obviously they get to reroll hits, which will help them when they obviously enter combat. Strength 3 is not as nice, but I feel they're designed to be more tank than anything else. Uh, so yeah, not bad. Power Swords will get through armor. I'm okay with that. But actually, I think ridiculously cheap as well. I think they're about 15 points. I could be wrong on that one, but uh, generally okay. Seraphim Squad. Now this is one that we sort of saw in leaks and things. Uh, essentially one of their stratagems, this is the sort of jump in unit, uh, they've got jump packs, uh, they've got I think two bolt pistols each, frag and crack, two of them can take either two hand flamers or two infernal, uh, infernal pistols, uh, so that gives you four flamers essentially, or two infernal bolt pistol, uh, four infernal bolt pistol shots, which is quite interesting. Uh, yeah, so not bad at clearing hordes. I mean, the problem is with Infernal Pistol is that, uh, sorry, the Hand Flamer, is that it's only strength three. If it was strength four, I would say these things are a beast. They're pretty good. Strength three is a bit tricky. Uh, it might be good against things like Tau, Tyranids, <coughs> uh, uh, Astra Militarum, but against things like uh, Orcs, you know, that extra, you know, toughness is going to make a heck of a difference. 
whether they maybe see them as better off as just coming in and trying to go in and do their melter shot with their infernal pistol they're getting close because they are pistols and they can charge in and be a harassment might be better there as well uh, I will just have to stress test and see in that one uh, interesting unit I know this is one I think they want them to work uh, improve the invul save on them uh, from shield face abilities by one so they've essentially got a five up invul which is really really good but I just feel the inferno uh, the, the hand flamer maybe need to be a wee bit better uh, Dominion Squad, now Dominion Squad is essentially your sort of special weapon squad so you can fill them up with special weapons if you wish uh, they also have a vanguard movement which is nice you know you obviously can go in uh, you know you know, just get your special weapons and do some stuff there. Retribution Squad is your heavy heavy weapon specialist in that one, so they get to use the heavy weapons, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then we have uh, the Pentinent Machine Engines. Now, these are the ones I think a lot of people will be talking about. So they're looking really good. They are movement 7, weapon skill 3, bliss skill 5, don't worry about it, strength 5, toughness 6, wound 7, 4 attacks apiece with 4 up save. So overall that's pretty good. Uh, they're each armed with two heavy flamers, two heavy flamers, two heavy 2d6 flame shots that hit automatically, so who cares about that 5 up uh, to hit. Hit automatically, strength 5 minus 1 AP, 2 damage. That's really good. But even better is the Pentium Buzz Blades, which is times 2 strength, making them strength 10, minus 3 AP, 3 damage piece. That's scary. And on top of that they've got Zealot, so they reroll hit rolls in the first round of combat, that's scary, and then they've got uh, Desperate for Redemption, you can fight with this unit twice in each fight phase, uh, instead of only once, so essentially giving them 8 attacks each, and Berserk Killing Machines is that they have a 5 up ignore wounds rule. These things are scary, however they do clock up in about 100 points each, but still, that is a scary wee machine. Uh, I'm intrigued, I'm very 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 intrigued if you've not seen the Pentant Engines before. That's what they look like. Uh, yeah, I think they are a pretty solid choice overall. Uh, 100 points, I could see it doing quite well. Big fan of that. So, notes on that one, good. Uh, and I think the last one I'm talking about is uh, Emulator. Uh, the Emulator is sort of like a troop transport, small one. Think of, not the Rhino, what's it called, Razorback. Uh, I don't play Marines. Uh, Razorback in terms of it can take a small amount of units. But it has a fun wee weapon on it, which is the Emulator Flamer, which is essentially 12 inch 2d6 Assault Flamer. Uh, heavy Flamer. So 2d6 automatic hits, 12 inches, so you can move it, advance, flame. Pretty nice, but a little bit expensive. Uh, you know, a little bit pricey for what it does, but I actually think it's pretty cool uh, being able to do that. You know, you can move troops in, but I just prefer to flame. You know, I think I just move this to be aggressive board control. Flame away, get charged, flame away. Uh, yeah, pretty, pretty cool on that one. Next, I'm briefly going to go into the Warlord traits for them before going to Stratagems. So, Warlord traits, uh, overall, I was not too impressed with these. They were okay, but nothing I want to write home about. Ones that uh, stood out for me was Beacon of Faith. At the start of your turn, roll a d6 if your Warlord's on the battlefield. On a 4 plus, you gain a Faith point. Celestine has this, good, because you'll probably use her, and this is probably my favourite one, you know, getting more faith points and using them is kind of essential. So I really like that one, I think that one is pretty darn good. Indomitable Belief, the invul save for friendly order units from Shield of Faith uh, ability is improved to 5, while they're within 6 inches of uh, your Warlord. So yeah, that's really handy. Uh, having a better invul, really, really good. It means that some units, such as Seraphim, can go up to a 4 plus invul. Which is good, so the only problem is you don't have an HQ that could probably keep up with them. But not bad, but I really do like the Beacon of Faith. I think that's going to be a good one to go to. Next up is Relics. Now again, I was like, mm, they're okay. You know, there's a... So you've got the Book of St. Lucius, which increases the range of bears or abilities by 3 inches. So obviously that can work with Indomitable Faith to make that 9 inches. You reroll one tip. Pretty, pretty nice in that one. Three inch, uh, uh, three inch increase in range works well for call. Can work well for them as well. Uh, Litanies of faith. Roll a d6 for each time you successfully pass the test of faith for friendly adeptus sororitas units uh, whilst within six inches or better. On a five plus, the faith used to attempt that act 
of faith is immediately refunded. I think it would be handy for Canon S to have this uh, relic, uh, giving uh, you know the reroll ranged to you know units nearby, probably your heavy ones, maybe heavy bolters to turn down units, uh, and then uh, your possibility to then refund that is really, really handy. So yeah, I like the litanies of faith for the relic. But overall, there's a couple of like pistol one. The pistol one's actually not bad. It's got good range, strong to damage. The power blade upgrade's okay as well. But uh, yeah, not bad overall. Uh, there's some clear winners in that one, then ones that I'm just a bit, bit situational. Then there's one that upgrades the deny the witch from shield of faith to two d6. But again, if your opponent's smart they can work around it and I just think that the Shield of Faith anti psycho ability could probably do with a bit of a redo in general. Stratagems, so there's a few here I'm going to talk about, there is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14 stratagems which is not bad if you ask me for a beta codex but I'm going to speak about a few that I think are the key essential ones. So a uh, Burning Descent. Use a stratagem after a Seraphim squad unit from your army is set up on the battlefield using its Sky Strike ability. You can immediately shoot with that unit as if it was the shooting phase, and for those attacks, the range of that unit's hand flamers is increased to 12 inches. This does not prevent it from shooting again in the following shooting phase. One command point. So essentially, you're getting a free shooting attack with that one. <sighs> not bad, but you're only wielding bolt pistols, so. Okay, and then the hand flamers are okay, but they're strength three. If they're strength four, I'd be like, yeah, one command point, yeah, and you get your increased range to flame them. Great. Doesn't increase the infernal uh, pistol, an infernal pistol, which is a shame because that would be solid. If you can increase the infernal pistol, that would be devastating. But uh, that's not the case. Thinks okay. I think it's working. I think it. I think the squad just needs a wee bit of a tweak. And then that could be an absolute devastating stratagem. On other armies, that would be phenomenal. Really good. Uh, next up we have Suffer Not the Witch. Use this stratagem at the start of the shooting phase or fight phase. Choose an Adeptus Soror Sororitas unit uh, from your army. To the end of the phase, you can reroll failed wound rolls for attacks that, made, uh, that are made by the unit that target an enemy psycho unit. That is a good one for one command point. Essentially, if you're fighting Grey Knights, Thousand Suns, some demons, where there's a lot of psychers, just about everything in the army is a psyker, uh, you can reroll failed wound rolls. That's really awesome. For one command point. Really, really good. I like it. I think that's really, really solid. Next up is Extremist Trigger Words. Use a stratagem in the fight phase when you pick an Arco Flagellance unit to fight. Till the end of the phase, replace the unit's Arco Flails ability. Make three hit rolls for each attack made with this unit. So instead of D3, it's an automatic three. Uh, at the end of the phase, roll a 6 for each, uh, roll a number of d6 equal to the number of models in the unit. For each result of a 6, one model is slain. So that's where you could be like, ah, oh, I could roll those, you know, if you have 10 guys, it'd be 20 dice, 20 d3 to see how many attacks. You just go, now nah, 2 command points, I'm going to straight up take the 60 attacks. And they do hurt pretty well, and they do get the reroll hits. So what I think for 2 command points, yeah, that's pretty good. I think that's, that's not bad. Uh, how it's going to work, you know, certainly whether it should be that they do lose uh, a ga uh, one, of their, one of their unit on a six is debatable, but I still think that's actually very, very handy. If you get charged with a big unit then, it's going to pay off dividends. Next up is Blessed Bolt. Use this stratagem before shooting with an Adeptus Sororitas infantry unit from your army in the shooting phase. Till the end of the phase, change the AP characteristic of Storm Bolters that mo uh, of storm bottles that models in that unit armed with to minus so that with to minus two AP so the AP becomes minus two in storm bolters and their damage characteristic becomes two. That's one command point. The key unit that works well with I feel is Dominion squads where I think it's a five man squad where they can all arm to storm bolters. Storm bolters I think a rapid fire two. He quotes before he checks uh, storm bolters. I'm not a loyalist player, so I don't play them too much. Yep, rapid fire two, 24 inches. So if you get a small five man squad within range, you can essentially put uh, 20 shots, yep, if you're in rapid fire range, at uh, minus two AP and two damage. That can really tear some things apart. Uh, add in act of faith, add in plus one to hit. And if you're against psycho or reroll wounds, that could be really, really good. 
uh, you know, really, really handy for them as well. Uh, last one I'm going to say that's pretty handy to have as a go-to is Martyrdom. Uh, use a stratagem when uh, Adeptus Serrata's character from your army is slain, immediately gain d3 faith points. If the model was your warlord, you instead gain 3 faith points. So basically one command point, get faith points. Whether you're using faith points or not is debatable, but still, uh, if your warlord dies, take 3 faith points. Why not? You know, it's 3 faith points. Super, super handy. So yeah, that's very, very brief sort of overlook on the Adeptus Sororitas army. Uh, when the Codex comes out, I would love to sort of go into a bit more detail on this army. Uh, certainly Celestine has really impressed me in terms of the army, uh, in terms of the look of them. So, and then we've seen some leaks of like concepts, model stuff, and they are looking very, very impressive. I think there's definitely a few tweaks in the beta codex, uh, I'm going to go over in more detail and you know what, one of the few times I might actually write, and I think they do ask for people to email in suggestions whether they're going to read all of them or not, it's purely speculation. But certainly I'm going to have a very good read of it together and basically, and whether I'll maybe do a video on it and say my absolute in-depth strengths and weaknesses of, of the, the beta codex and where it can be improved. Usually I do that at the end of my tactical talks of when I complete it. Well, I've done it once with Admech, I talked about strengths and weaknesses, things going up, and I'll do the same for Chaos Space Marines. But I'm thinking I will do a proper one for the Adeptus Sororitas, because I'd love to see them get, you know, Games Workshop said they want to get feedback, and certainly the people who play them are going to be the ones that give the most uh, in-depth analysis. And I highly encourage you that if you are our Adeptus Sororitas player. Let's see if they listen. Let's see if they listen. Let's see if they give us feedback and go, you know, we released the beta codex and they went, we got loads of feedback on certain units. Here are the highlights of where people said were strong. Here's the ones that they said were weak. Whether they'll do that or not is pure speculation, but I'd love to see that they actually do listen to players. They've given us access to beta test this codex. Let's give them our feedback and maybe that might open up to interesting ideas in the future. So thanks again for watching. Please comment, share, like, and subscribe. Let us know what you think of uh, beta codexes. Do you think it's a good idea? Uh, that may be something that you might roll forward. Uh, and what do you think of the Adeptus Sororitas in general? If I've made any mispronunciations, I am sorry. So yeah, thanks again, and we'll see you on our Tabletop Salt Battle Report.